So there were some pretty big leaks circulating this week concerning the next main installment for the Monster Hunter franchise. These claimed that Monster Hunter Wilds would be fully open world rather than loading into individual zones like in prior games. You would have one big open space to seamlessly explore as you play through the story, hunt monsters, and of course progress through the end game gear grind. They also claimed that Wilds would introduce more experimental mechanics than both Rise and World, that it's going to be Capcom's quote biggest game ever, and that it's planned to release in the first quarter of 2025. Now, these leaks were supposedly sprung by Dusk Gollum, who, amongst the leaking community, is considered a tier three source. That's right, there are tier lists for video game leakers. You're, you're not, uh, you're hearing me correctly here. Uh, a tier three source means that their information is accurate about 50% of the time, which, hey, isn't bad. I mean, it's not the most reliable source of information, but it's better than being only accurate like 5% or 1% of the time. Uh, regardless of the average accuracy percentage, Percentage, though, this whole thing got people talking because of course it did. The idea of a massive open world Monster Hunter game with new experimental mechanics and Capcom's biggest game ever, that sounds quite appealing to Monster Hunter fans and to myself. Unfortunately, this excitement didn't last very long as the real Dusk Gollum posted on his Twitter account saying that someone had faked those screenshots that were being used as a source and so they couldn't be trusted as accurate information. Although I will say this doesn't necessarily discount everything that was said said here because even if this leak wasn't real, it's not the first time that we've heard Monster Hunter Wilds will be an open world game. Prior verified leaks have said as much, but then also the reveal trailer from a few months back at the very least suggests larger maps than we have ever seen for the franchise. It also hints at plenty of new interesting mechanics, which is to be expected because don't forget this is the next mainline installment in the franchise, which usually means new stuff. If you weren't aware Monster Hunter games release in general, generations with a major and then minor game in between. So for example, Monster Hunter World was technically Monster Hunter 5, followed by Monster Hunter Rise as a stopgap in between this next game, Monster Hunter Wilds, which will be kicking off the sixth generation for the franchise. And a new generation tends to mean an opportunity for them to try new things. While Capcom has been very tight-lipped when it comes to revealing specific details, the initial announcement trailer, short as it was, did actually provide a sneak peek of quite a few things that we can expect, and there was actually a fair bit here. Before we dive into those details though and everything else that we know about the game, uh, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by AFK Journey. You may have heard of its predecessor, AFK Arena. Well, this sequel looks to build upon that with some new innovative features and novel offerings. This isn't just an idle game though, it's also an RPG where you embark on a journey and explore a fantasy 3D painted world. You'll play as the legendary mage Merlin, engaging in tactical battles and solving puzzles to unravel the mysteries of the world. From the Golden Wheatshire to the Veduso Mountains, you'll explore large diverse maps, meet interesting NPCs, and collect heroes from six different factions. You can collaborate with guildmates in Sandbox GVE or match with strangers on big maps and dungeon adventures. You can also partake in many side activities such as Honor Duel, Dream Realm, Legend Trail, Arena, and more. AFK Journey officially releases with over 40 free heroes, including epics, giving you a wide array of options. Additionally, you'll receive over 200 plus free pulls by progressing through the game and completing events. AFK Journey is free to play, available now with the PC version, downloadable from the official website, and mobile versions on the iOS and Google stores. If you'd like to learn more, go ahead and check out my link in the description below. Using the code AFKJOURNEY88 gets you 100 diamonds and 18,888 gold coins. Okay, so what do we know about Monster Hunter Wilds? Well, most of it does come from the reveal trailer as well as a few additional sources of new news and some you'd like yes leaks but this time verified that we've picked up over the past couple of months now since the original trailer was revealed we've had internet sleuths going through and dissecting every single pixel on every single frame and from this a lot of information has been pulled so for one yes if it's not a fully 100 percent completely open world with seamless zones we do at the very least expect the wilds is going to feature zones that are significantly larger in size than any of their prior games we had a few different shots displaying what appears to be fairly huge swaths of explorable area. That along with the mount offering increased traversal speed, which is coincidentally great for covering large distances. This mount seems to have a few modes. We saw a regular run on two legs, a sprinting animation on four legs, and then some light flying mechanics or gliding to be specific. Also speaking of the map size and the mount and how they might be related, well at one point we see this mount hopping between rock formations launching off of these gemstone pads. Now this pretty clearly 
appears to be a locked in animation happening almost automatically. There's probably a trigger point at one position and then you automatically hop between those spots until you get to the ending point. And this would actually make a whole lot of sense as somewhat of a zone transition. So just imagine this, you've got this desert like biome that we see in the trailer and then all along the edges at specific points, we can imagine there were exit locations going into other adjacent biomes, almost acting as like a seamless loading screen from one map into another. This would be a great alternative to one full seamless open world where you still have the map system that uh, Monster Hunter is known for, but then you have connecting points without actually hitting a hard loading screen. You just have like a transition animation. So maybe if you head north out of the desert and you take one of the exits, it will transition you into the mountain and snow map. Or if you headed east, you would go into the forest map. Or if you headed west, you could go into the coastal map. And then each of those maps might have similar exit points with seamless transitions into the other adjacent zones. I actually think uh, rather than one big seamless open world, this idea of connected maps with transitions between them seems more likely and much more in line with what I would personally expect from a Monster Hunter game. Some other interesting notes here, uh, specifically on the mount, we see that it looks to be carrying supplies, including what appears to be a fabric tent, which could possibly mean, and people are speculating, we'll be able to set up mobile camps while exploring, which again would make sense if the game is as large as theorized. We're out there riding on our mount and then at either specific locations or just wherever we want, we can maybe set up a camp and then this would allow us to cook food and get supplies and maybe even possibly swap weapons because there is the idea of weapon swapping teased in the trailer too. We can see the player in the trailer is quite clearly carrying a great sword on their back. However, on the side of the mount, we do see what appears to be a light bow gun inside of a holster, hinting at the idea that we might possibly, while out on hunts, be able to swap from one weapon to another thanks to the mount carrying an alternative for us. Uh, there will likely be some restrictions here, but it does appear like weapon swapping from one class to another in the middle of a hunt would be something that we will be getting in Wilds, which is a pretty big addition to the franchise. Other things noted from the trailer is monster density. It seems like we will be getting an increased a variety of this. In one shot, we can see upwards of 40 monsters with a mix of predator, prey, and endemic life. This number of monsters on display in one single space is much larger than is typical for Monster Hunter games. Territory Wars appear to be returning as well. This was a big feature in Monster Hunter World. In the trailer, we can see these large furry predators attacking the armadillo, or rather the pangolin looking creatures here. We also see what looks to be dynamic weather patterns. So first this dust cloud rolls in, engulfing the player, and then followed immediately by a lightning storm. And the storm appears to not just be visual in nature, but also impact the environment and monsters. We can see lightning striking a monster at one point and appears to enhance them as well, probably making them stronger. And then there's also a brief clip of these uh, pillars getting struck by lightning. And maybe that then also stores the lightning and, and potentially players can make use of it, either by forcing monsters to run into these lightning pillars once they're charged, or maybe you could charge your weapon on the lightning pillars. There's all sorts of possibilities here. And as for the hunter, we did make a couple of notes for hunter equipment. Now there's the obvious, they're carrying a weapon and they've got their armor, but then we also see a slinger like the one used in Monster Hunter World and what appears to be a scout fly cage. The slinger, of course, used for hurling various projectiles at monsters. And then the scout fly cage is used for helping with navigation and tracking while on a hunt. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, it was a brief trailer, but there's quite a bit that you could pull from it. And this is like a compilation of all of the detailed information that like dedicated Monster Hunter fans have kind of gleaned while looking at the trailer a hundred times over and over and over again. But it's not just kind of pulling things from the reveal trailer. There's been other sources of information. So for example, there was a brief interview with the game's producer where he revealed that the game will feature a new level of detailed creatures and ecosystems. And this pretty much confirms the idea that we're going to be having this diverse interactions between monsters and wildlife inside of the game. This was uh, quite well done in Monster Hunter world. We have these like predator and prey interactions, fights over territory. It seems like that will be making a return here in Wilds. He also mentioned that they're taking full advantage of the current generation of hardware. Most games say this, but the specific note here is that it will not be releasing on the prior generation of consoles. Also, there's been no mention of a Switch release, and at this point, it's seeming like that will be unlikely unless we get a Switch 2 or some big upgrade uh, to Nintendo's hardware. And then we've also had some verified leaks. A few things have uh, spilled out here and there over the past few months. Just the other week, in fact, we learned that Monster Hunter Wilds is being built on Capcom's RE engine and will take advantage of the expanded functionality that came when Capcom was developing Dragon's Dogma 2. Specifically, yes, we could point to the fact that Dragon's Dogma 2 is an open world game. It features these 
these large seamless maps. Now, again, this doesn't mean that wilds will be full on 100% open. It could still very well be a map based system where you have to load into these different playable areas. But as I mentioned, this would work great for these like transitions from one zone to another. And at the very least, it does appear like the advances made to the RE engine uh, will let them make much larger maps, more expansive maps than we've ever seen in Monster Hunter games. And again, this was hinted at in the trailer with the large swaths of land that we saw on display. Although I got to say running on RE engine and being more open with these larger zones, especially ones with a higher density of enemies, uh, it does raise a few concerns because for as much as I enjoy playing Dragon's Dogma 2, the game's performance wasn't particularly great. Playing through the game on my mid to high end PC, I had regular performance issues. I've got a 3080 Ti and an i7 processor. I've got like about 64 gigs of RAM or something. And I was constantly dealing with performance problems. And in the eight or so hours that I spent playing the game on my PlayStation 5, even locking the game at 30 frames per second wasn't enough to prevent regular frame drops. So yes, RE Engine doesn't exactly have the best starting showcase when it comes to its ability to handle an open world game, games with large maps, uh, especially ones with increased monster density, as seems to be the case here with Monster Hunter Wilds having apparently more density than we've seen in Monster Hunter games in the past. So you combine all of those things, the idea that uh, this is going to be one of the biggest Monster Hunter games with either the biggest world or a completely open world with the increased monster density. Uh, yeah, running on RE Engine. It leaves me a little bit concerned, but I guess on the plus side, we are at least a full year away from the launch of Monster Hunter Wilds, and hopefully in that time, they can make continued improvements to the engine, they can optimize things, uh, and Dragon's Dogma 2 gets better, but then also, if Wilds is in fact running on RE Engine, hopefully that game will be, be in a better position when it first releases. Uh, something else that we know for sure is going to be in Monster Hunter Wilds is, of course, microtransactions, because yes, hot off of the back of Dragon's Dogma 2 is the discussion of Capcom releasing games with day one microtransactions. This has been the case for a while now, for better or worse, and it doesn't seem like it's changing anytime soon. I don't even know why I would say for better. It's just for worse. It's it's just for worse, the fact that they're launching all of their games with microtransactions. As like worthless, as unimportant, as unimpactful as they might be, it doesn't, they don't make the games better, that is for sure. So yes, uh, just like Monster Hunter World, just like Monster Hunter Rise, just like plenty of other Capcom games in recent memory, you should expect day one paid for content in Monster Hunter Wilds as well. I gotta say though, um, I, I am hopeful, really hopeful for this game. The microtransaction conversation aside, you know, Monster Hunter World was really successful. In fact, it was the most successful game in Capcom history. It sold over 25 million copies since it released in 2018. The game remains insanely popular, averaging a peak daily concurrent count of nearly 100,000 players on Steam alone. And Steam is not the only platform that people are playing Monster Hunter World on. It's really impressive. In fact, the most recent Monster Hunter game, Rise, which released a couple of years ago in 2022, that doesn't come even close to the numbers that uh, Monster Hunter World reached. The point of this being, uh, with how successful world was and it, with it being such a big deal for Capcom uh, as the fifth major installment in Monster Hunter, uh, the pressure is on for Wilds to deliver as this is their sixth next major entry in the franchise. So yeah, I do expect them to take some big swings. I expect them to try some new things, but I also expect them to have it uh, feel similar enough so that all of the new fans that World picked up are going to be comfortable with the game. So yes, like I, I, I do expect like the open world nature or at least the large open maps with potentially those interconnected seamless transitions between zones. I do expect things like the fact that we've got the scout flies, like a lot of the um, mechanics and stuff, the things that people got familiar with with World, I do expect them to be carried over at least in spirit with this game, but just at, at a larger and bigger scale. And that is exciting for me. A little bit concerned if it is in fact running on RE Engine about performance. That's actually uh, learning that. That's probably one of my biggest worries about the game right now, because we, we do actually know so little. There's been so few actually confirmed details, just what we can pull and glean and hypothesize from looking at the trailer. But yeah, if it's actually running on RE Engine and it is going to be bigger and the monster density is going to be higher, um, you know, Dragon's Dogma 2 wasn't the best showcase of that engine's ability to handle big, open, highly uh, densely populated zones. So yeah, that's a bit of a concern. But as I said, we got a year, so hopefully that 
they can make it better, they can improve optimization and all that stuff, and we can get a better showcase of how RE Engine can handle a game of that scale. For now, though, we wait. Uh, we did learn during the initial announcement that they plan to reveal more details about Monster Hunter Wilds in the coming months, specifically sometime this summer. And as of now, the game is still scheduled to release in 2025. Whether or not those leaks will be true at all, and if it comes in the first quarter or not, we have no clue, but we should be getting further confirmation and more of a targeted release window at some point in the next few months so let's stay tuned for that i'll be sure to keep you guys updated because this is one of the games uh, on the horizon that i'm really looking forward to so there you go that is it for today's video thank you as always for watching hope you all enjoyed see you next time